Welcome to the Dremel Show. Dremel, 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 fucking Dremel, 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 fucking Dremel, bruh. French, French, Welcome to Saturday's Ranch. Yeah. French, 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 Alright guys, moving on to the carb install. These are sweet new Makunis that I got for the build. The M30s, and uh, you know, say what you will about uh, being hard to tune, or they're not good for this build, or they're not good for the bike. Stick to stock, stick to the stock airbox, blah blah blah, and that's fine. Um, I just decided to get these because I feel like the performance parts in the engine will require it. Now, moving on for the carb. Uh, set up here so when you order these um, it doesn't come with instructions or anything like that so trying to figure this shit out is a little bit hard if you've never done anything like this so there's an excellent video on YouTube I'll put a link in the description check that out this guy did, did a perfect uh, perfect video on how to install these bad boys and thank God because I mean literally comes with like a bag of stuff like there you go figure it out but what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to follow that guy's instructions in the video that i posted below and um, we're going to get we're going to measure the so it comes with a throttle cable we're going to measure the cable and these are just the parts for the throttle cable you know go on the ends of these so we need to cut this to the length i need when i get these mounted eventually my mounting bolts are missing at this time, but I have new boots. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to try and build these. We're just trying to cut this cable, get this cable built. And then um, i got to replace these, this choke here with, uh, with a push dial. So you can see this here. So there's this, this one here. I just heard these get in the way of something on the bike. So take those out so I got these push ones so basically just sit in that thing and you just pull it up basically and then push it back down for when you need the choke so we're gonna replace those so we're gonna get started right now so we'll go over the bike and measure this wire up uh, okay so we're just on the side of the bike here I've got the cable mounted kind of just rooted a little bit the way I think it should go um, you can see here I've already I put in my my uh, clip-ons here so that's cool and I just mocked up my my throttle just quickly just so I could uh, just so I could get this measured and I I believe I have the wrong throttle I've ordered the wrong throttle that's just great this is a push-pull throttle I just need a single because this is only a single while so wire so I think I have the wrong throttle but that's okay I'm gonna go I'll go ahead and get a different one and I could sell this one um, but basically so I'm just rooting the cable, so I just have to measure roughly where it is. And I can always take more wire off, but... And then you can see the cable runs along here and down and here, and this will split off into the two carbs. And I um, just want you to no notice and be aware of if you're buying the carb boots here, there is a gasket that will go here. When I find the mounting bolts for this, I'll I'll put these on. But for now, I'm just mocking this up. So I just found this old bolt. So I'm just gonna mock this up, put it here, and then measure this cable. But just kind of quick reference here. So just get that on there, and that's looking sexy. Hello. Um, so. Just gonna take this cable and roughly measure how long I need it to be. So I give myself a little extra space, a little bit extra. So what I'm gonna do is just measure to the top of the float bulk here and, and mark it here. And that's fine. I, Maybe I'll give myself a little bit more on here. Maybe right there. So I'll just get this out of the way. 
And there's also something I wanted to show you guys was that uh, my my cam chain tensioner. So I had originally painted that black. Here, I'll try and get you a better view. So you can see that sweet baby right there. I, that was originally painted black, but then when we tightened up these bolts here, the paint started cracking. So I guess I didn't do too much of a good job sanding it down. It was pretty hard to sand these surfaces for some reason. So what I did was just, I took it off and just polished it up really quickly. And um, that's looking really cool. So I just gave it a nice polish uh, with a wire brush, a little WD-40. And I think that's looking really neat compared to the engine. And that's gonna look, uh, kind of just matches the side covers. It's gonna look cool between the carbs there. So I did that before off camera, just kind of uh, getting, getting that done. So I think that looks cool. So I'm gonna measure the other cable and then we'll get these cables cut. So I'm just gonna mark the length at which I need to the exposed wire to be. So I already cut the wire, but I have the piece that I cut. So I'm just gonna use this piece to uh, measure. So I just took it apart there. What I'm gonna do is just stick it through here. I'm just gonna put it in here into that little hole down there. So I'm just gonna mock it up. Don't need a spring. So I'm just gonna put it into where it would go into that little groove in there. So it hits the bottom. I'm just gonna slide this on and then I'm just gonna mark it maybe just a little couple millimeters back from where this this uh, boot here is. So just to give myself some extra space. So I'm just gonna measure it from there. So I'll just mark it on the wire there. Now I can use this as a guide to strip back my wire here. So I'll just take this, put it up against this, and then I'll get this stripped up. All right guys, so you can see here, I've gone through and cut my cables to length. <clears throat> and I just added the little tips on the end. Um, the cable was pretty tricky to cut. Uh, the wire cutters didn't really do a too good of a job. It was able to explode. There is a little, there's like a, a piece of metal that's like wrapped around this wire. And that's really hard to cut with any conventional cutters. Like what I had to do is just expose the wrapped wire. So what I did was I cut the rubber away and peeled it open so I could see it. And then I kind of just bent it on an angle, exposing it. And with the wire, with the gr angle grinder, I sawed it right through it. So just very carefully so that I didn't nick this wire. And then I just covered the gnarly t tip ends with this chrome that it comes with. There you go. So those are, that part's done. Now I have to fit this little tiny, tiny piece here. Has to fit on the end of this wire. And uh, you have to solder that on. So you could see that kind of just fits over the end. Right here, this little brass tip there. So I have to solder that. So I have my dad's really super awesome old school. Fuck, this thing's from like the 1970s, I think, or the 1960s, but works like a charm. So I got my solder and I have my bad boy 60s soldering gun and we're gonna solder this bitch on. So you definitely wanna make sure you crimp these bad boys up. There we go, so those nice in place and they're not going anywhere. Okay, now we can solder this up. That's looking good to me. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the other one and it'll be ready to go. Loosen it up and this all comes out as one piece. So then that just holds this whole unit, just goes in, no problem. Just tighten this bad boy up, not too tight. You don't wanna strip the threads. And then basically that just works like a knob style, like just like that. So that's cool, we got those replaced and that's all I pretty much need to do with this. 
we're just on the back side of the engine here and I have my car boots and before I'd mentioned that I might need to elongate the boots to make them fit because I showed you that the two mounting holes didn't line up. So it's a little bit of a wall I hit there and I thought maybe I could elongate the boot and that would help it <clears throat> excuse me and that would help it fit. What needs actually to be elongated is just the mounting holes here, just right here on each side. I've actually ha been advised that some people actually just cut this whole section off on both sides and then use a washer in here to firmly plant it onto the, the head. Uh, now, I'm what I'm going to do is just try and elongate it with maybe like a Dremel um, and just take away some of the material right here just along this edge and try and leave some material so that I could put a washer or sit up against it. I just feel better about that. So I'm just looking at it now. It's, it's hard to get you guys a good angle um, so you could see both holes, but basically I need to almost take it to the very edge of this boot here just to just I'm just using a pencil just to sh to mark where I need to shave off. So th so the mounting hole is what you need to elongate. So I'm going to go ahead with the Dremel right now and remove some material from both car boots on the both sides just try and keep it equal and then uh, we'll be able to get these car boots in place. So I've Dremel uh, the hole a little bit out uh, just leaving a little bit of material and then I'm gonna do the same thing for this side and then we're gonna try and see if we can fit this on to the bike. So let's see if this bad boy will fit. So I'll just use the, cause the gasket fits perfectly with the mounting holes here. So I'll just, so it's easier. I can't get the camera in there, but you can see now that the car boot has been modified. The two ends have been uh, taken in a bit, elongated here and here, just leaving just a tiny bit of material you could see that on both sides, just leaving just a tiny bit of material, just so I can get a, hopefully fit a washer in there. And then, um, and that, that's looking like it's gonna fit. So we're gonna get these bad boys on the bike and then I'll be able to fit those carbs in there. You want the gasket, make sure the gasket's in place. There are gaskets that go here. So make sure that's in place. I'm just gonna put that on dry. And then I do have some washers with my mounting bolts here. So I'm just going to try and get this one on inside of the engine. Let's get that started. Let's get this in place. Now go ahead. I'll do the other side and then we'll be able to get those carbs in place. You do want to make sure you form a nice seal here. Um, this is a crucial area of intake. So you don't want any leaks here and um, that would be a bad thing. So uh, these are in place. I'm going to do the other side and we'll get the carbs in place. All right, guys, this is looking pretty sweet here. Um, they, those are all nice and installed. Um, they're really tight to there. I took an impact driver and just torqued these up really nice. And um, they're sitting really nice against the head. So we're going to go ahead and get the uh, Makunis on and that's going to be pretty sweet because can't wait to see those bad boys on the engine. All right guys, let's see if we can get this carb installed. So just on the right side of the engine here. And I'm probably gonna have to take these out anyways to change up some of the jets. But um, for now, I wanna get them on here um, just so I could see how cool it looks. <laughs> but um, before we do that, uh, we have to put this uh, brace kind of bracket here on. So that's just gonna secure the carb to the boot. And then this slips in quite simply there like that and then what I do is get you a taller view here and you can see I've already slipped through my throttle cable so that's good to go you saw me solder the brass tip on the end of that so that's ready now I have to slip everything through the top of the carb little carb lid then there's a spring that goes on after that and then we gotta compress the spring here a little tricky but let's make sure it's going all the way through there we go and then this uh, brass nipple kind of just sits inside this guy here 
Um, you'll see a space for it. It'll all become apparent. So that just goes on there like that. Then there's like a needle that's, that sits in the middle. Put that back. And then this cap sort of catches the brass uh, tip. And it only goes on one way. So I'll put that on next. And that sort of sits in there like that. You can see that. So this is good. So I'll get the spring seated in there. And then this slides back into the top of the carb. Also only goes one way. There's grooves for it. And I just put the lid on. And bottom that out. Make sure that's nice and tight. Carb sitting in there. Some of my wire is exposed here. I don't know if that's like a super big deal. I'm assuming it's not. I don't know if you want this to sit right in there like that. You might. I might actually have to modify that a little bit. But it's always nice to have longer, a longer wire than not long enough. So all that's really left to do is put the, the cone filter on. There were some filters that came with the kit that I bought and I'm not too crazy about them, um, but I might try and uh, try and get a different color. They're red. I might try and get a different color, but that's looking pretty cool so far. And um, that's a good, nice little indication of what the engine's gonna look like. I might have to take this off eventually, so, but I just wanted to see how everything fit. And what I might do next is just try and, uh, I really want to, grind out these uh, fins. I like that look, that sanded like fin look. You could already tell, you can, might be able to see that I've, tr I've tried to do it a little bit. I had like a sander, but the sander I had was just too big. So what I'm gonna try and do is uh, do it with the Dremel and try and just sand the fins out and get that like silver fin look. And um, it, it sometimes it, uh, if you sand it improperly, it's better to use something really flat for this, like a flat wood block or something. Um, but I'm gonna try it with a Dremel and see how it works. It might not work pro uh, properly, but we'll see how it goes. This thing's sweet. This is working really nice. I'm just going through with the Dremel and just giving my fins a nice little sanding, just tiny bit, not trying to touch the engine, just mostly just get the paint off there, get these nice cooling fins nice and shiny just to give it that hot rod racer kind of look. Uh, I think that's gonna look really cool. I admit it would have been a lot easier to do this when the engine was not in the bike or together. I uh, totally didn't think of this until everything was everything was uh, together. Um, so, but it's working out. This uh, sweet, I have, I think this is a 60 grit or 120 grit sanding uh, disc here. This thing is fucking badass. Um, and it's just ripping through. It's not chipping the paint, so it's giving me a nice shiny fin here. And I just gotta get some of the angles. Uh, you gotta get your Dremel into some of the angles, but it's working out pretty good. So, just gonna go ahead and get this done. We're gonna Dremel some Dremel, and then Dremel, 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 Dremel. You can see here that the Dremel did a pretty good job of this. I'm not looking for anything too crazy. Just wanted to expose some of the metal there. And I think that's just a really nice little touch. I might just take a little bit of sanding paper and sand out the hard to reach spots. Um, it was a little bit hard to reach. I, in retrospect, should have really done this when um, I just had freshly painted the cylinder head here and had it, um, had it on the bench. So if you're gonna do this, I don't su uh, really recommend trying this on the bike. It was a little tough to get into the hard places unless you have a different method, maybe with a small sanding block, um, it might be better. But I think it's looking pretty good. Uh, it looks pretty badass. That's probably gonna add about five to 10 horsepower, right? All right, so you can see obviously that I have the other carb in place. That's looking pretty good. I clamped them down and those are all ready to go. I do have a little bit of extended wire that I'm concerned about that's gonna rub on this boot. So I might have to shorten this and re-solder, but that's all right. I'm gonna wait until I get the correct throttle, and then um, and then finish 
that whole throttle cable off and get that just measured perfectly um, because I don't want to take off too much space here and not have enough for the to wrap around the twist throttle thing. Um, so, so what we can do now is just mock up the rear wheel on the back just to measure out the dropout to see when it makes contact with the top of my custom seat and battery box kind of. Um, but I also kind of just want to look at the rear wheel again. I want to look at the sprocket and see if I can't get that to sit on see if I can't get that get rid of that extra space that that 520 sprocket is creating so we'll go check take a look at the rear wheel now and then we'll fit it on the back and do some measurements so I believe I may have licked this whole debacle with the rear sprocket so what I did was I removed the the guard because it just looks way cooler like check that out boom in your face the other what I was doing before was that I had so I had to put these washers in the bottom here for my particular application I needed to add these two little washers so I have a flat washer and a lock washer and then I have my locking tabs and then my top my bolts my mounting bolts and then these tabs fold over that usually you just have this this washer it sits flat against the sprocket and what I was finding that because this sprocket is thinner it was creating this space for in the pins here and the bolt here was bottoming out before the at, before the I could get a torque on it it was bottoming out on the threads before I could get a nice torque on this so I had to make up the space with these two washers here and what I had done before was I cut I had modified the washer that I was using to allow for this uh, 70 mil uh, washer here I believe it's part number three on the fiche, but this little wa this washer here, um, so there's a washer and a circlip, and that circlip basically just um, keeps this whole mechanism in place. So this circlip, it, there's a little groove on the end of the hub, and that keeps this whole mechanism in place. So it just so it's for safety measure, so that doesn't fall out on you. So the because the pin, if you remove that circlip this whole mechanism can come out so this washer sits in between the circlip and the sprocket like that and but you can see now it's riding on the top of these washers here all, all four of them so that's making up for that extra space that's sitting there and now it is a tiny bit loose but um, I've been told that that's a good thing because it just allows for the chain to kind of self adjust itself and you'll and actually when you install the sprocket on the drive uh, shaft that also is a little bit loose it like it'll wiggle a little bit and I was a little bit nervous of that at first but that's actually normal because that means the chain's self-aligning um, so this is good so I'm happy with this um, I was thinking about getting another one of these 70 mil washers and I still might but the only place I could find one was on eBay and they're like 50 bucks with shipping just for a little washer so if anything, I might try and make something or get someone to make me something out of metal or something just to make a little washer that goes in there. But right now, I'm pretty satisfied with this. I think this is going to be enough. Um, so that's good. So we have the rear sprocket installed on the bike. Uh, I'm loving this. I think it looks really nice. So what we're going to what we're going to do now is mount this on the rear uh, on the swing arm, and that'll be look really cool. And then we can measure the the where it bottoms out on the seat and then I can give that measurement to a shock builder. So we'll go ahead, put this on the bike now. Okay, so we're gonna mount this wheel now. I have my adjusters on the swing arm, just like this on the other side. I have the bolts set up here on the other side. Let's move this wheel out of the way so you could see. You could see that it's just sitting there with the spacer on the inside here and then the adjusters on there. And then I'm gonna put my other spacer in the wheel bearing, kind of a, a dust cover side, and I have my wheel just sitting up on a piece of wood, and you just have to align everything kind of perfectly here. A little tricky to do, but there we go. Now wood is just helping to raise this tire up so that it's not just hanging. 
and then I have a rubber mallet and then it's going to help it through with the bearings. It's just getting hung up a bit. So just try and keep everything aligned and that bolt is going to start coming through in a sec. There we go. So that's home all the way. That's looking pretty good. Man, that looks cool. And what I want to do is just make sure these are straight and uh, just align them to the to the same notch on each side. I'll put it right in the middle for now. Cause that's a good starting point. And then there's a washer that goes on here at the end. And then the last thing to go on is the bolt. And then there is a uh, cotter pin that sits in there for safety as you know let's get that to hand tightness for now what I want to do is set up the wheel so it's perfectly straight so I'm just going to grab a ratchet and then we'll get this on the fourth notch in the middle for both sides all right so a little bit more of a close-up so what I'm trying to do is just get it to this fourth notch right there and so just trying to get this to line up perfectly that seems to be good. Obviously, you guys know there's like two. There's this locking, locking nut, and then this one here is what adjusts your chain. So that's sitting right on the fourth notch. And I'll go ahead and I'll do that for the other side, and then I'll know this for sure will be straight. So I just straighten the brake panel on the on the right side there, and I'm just gonna get this a nice snug. I don't have a socket that's big enough for it yet so I can't get a proper torque but that's uh, that's looking nice and snug there that wheels not going anywhere and the swing arm still is working good all right guys this is looking pretty sweet so just putting the final touches on this so what I did was just line up the notch on the fourth or middle notch uh, the marker on the middle notch on both sides and then I tightened this the main bolt Make that nice and snug, and then you can just snug these off, just so it makes contact with the end of the the swing arm here, and then just snug this kind of this bolt here, so that just keeps everything in place. So there you go. So both sides are nice and snug, and uh, that's not going anywhere. Guys, I have a rear wheel. What the? F this is sweet, man. It's looking awesome. Uh, it's half a bike right here. Um, unfortunately, I had to take the front forks off because I'm uh, having a problem with that top clamp. Uh, that's okay, but this is looking pretty good, man. Uh, I'm really liking everything. Pretty productive day today. We got the carbs on. We did some work on the fins. Um, just sanding those down just a tiny bit. And they look pretty good. I, the right side, I had to kind of save a little bit. I might have to repaint them and then try again, um, but that's okay. Um, and we figured out more or less the problem with the rear sprocket here. Uh, it's just, you know, made up for that space a little bit there. We got the rear wheel on, and um, so it's been a pretty good day so far. So what we're going to do right now, I'm just going to try and measure when the rear wheel. So I just have to lift it up like this and see when it makes contact with the seat. I don't have the seat pan, but I can visually tell uh, roughly uh, when that's going to do that. So what I'll try and do is just uh, do it by eye, kind of, more or less. It might be like a millimeter or two off. That's not going to make, make a big difference. Um, oh, yeah, this might be a good test. Oh, that's looking cool. Spin that wheel, buddy. So, uh... So yeah, so nothing left to do right now, but just measure this thing up and then uh, I can give that measurement to a uh, shock builder. So let's do that. All right, so I just have my battery box in place here. I just taped that on and then I have just a flat box here and that's just gonna act as my, my seat because I know that it's pretty flat and it's gonna sit pretty much in the same area. So, so you could see so it looks like to me that the wheel is going to make contact with the battery box first. So we may have to go back to the drawing board on that battery box. Um, so 
that's no good at all. So you can see it's just making contact right here. So what we're gonna do is, so lift it up until it makes contact. And then I'll measure from center eye to center eye. It's about, it looks about 11 inches. Are you, are you holding it right up? Yeah, so yeah. it's making contact? Yep. Yeah, there you go. So it's just about, it's just shy of 11 inches here. All right guys, so you can see, I'm just using a car jack here just to hold this tire up while I make an accurate measurement. So I'll lift you up here and <clears throat> what I'm using on the top here is just a flat box because I don't have my, my seat right now because it's off getting upholstered, but I'm using a flat box to simulate the seat and because it sits pretty flat there on the on the the top of the rails so um so that's making contact there and then i'm just gonna make a measurement so what i've done is just remove the battery box and um just so i could simulate and to see how much of a distance it makes it hits at when uh, the battery box is out of the way because i have to <clears throat> i'm gonna have to go ahead and redesign the battery box anyways be simply because it's just not fitting my electrical components and um, it's gonna have to be bigger. Unfortunately, uh, that kind of sucks, but I'm gonna have to get it made again or try and do one myself. So what I have here is just a measuring tape and what I'm gonna measure is from center eye to center eye here, up here, the mounting point, and see what kind of measurement I get because 11 inches before when it was hitting, that's a pretty large space and it's going to be hard for me to find a shock that's at stock length or a little bit taller um, because I would like a, it just a tiny bit taller um, just to raise up the front the rear end a little bit just to just make the bike a little quicker on the steering just for nimbleness um, just tiny bit nothing nothing drastic um, or I might just go with stock so either one of those two so stock uh, is I believe it's about three seven three hundred and seventeen and a half millimeters or twelve and a half inches, and then um, so to find a to find a shock that fully compresses at eleven inches, only an inch and a half, is I think uh, unrealistic. I did already done some research and um, they they can be hard to find so. I'm gonna measure from the center eye to the center eye here. So there you go. So it's about nine and five eighths of an inch. So nine and five eighths, that's a lot smaller than uh, 11. And I am gonna be able to find a shock that will compress at that and be more stock. But now I have to redesign my battery box here because my battery box was all the way coming back here just to make some extra space and now i'm gonna have to figure it out it's gonna be have to be a little deeper now uh, so i'm gonna have to do some research on that guys so we made it through we busted through some of the walls that i've been hitting so that's pretty good i'm feeling pretty good about this today was an awesome day we uh figured out the carb situation got those mounted I have to do a little more work on the top of the throttle where it connects onto the handlebars. Um, when I purchase the correct throttle, I'll get that installed. We also measured the dropout on the rear tire. That's, uh, that's an important th uh, measurement to know. That means I can give that, that value to a shock builder and get those b shocks built specifically for my application so that the shock will compress fully before that that hits the wheel. So that's what I'm looking for. I want a shock that compresses fully, but there's still about half an inch or more clearance between my custom seat and battery box. So once I get the top clamp figured out, I can get the forks installed, then I can install the front wheel, and then I'll have a roller on my hands, and that's gonna be pretty exciting. So until next time, thanks for all your support. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to come back. The project is getting off the ground. We're working out through the kinks here. This is a natural stuff that you're gonna find when you're building your own bike. But we're gonna get through this and uh, I'm gonna forge ahead. So thanks for watching. Until next time guys, wrench it up.